A complex sinusoid oscillator or signal generator is shown in this circuit implemented using two ideal op amps, three capacitors, and uh, three resistors. We want to analyze this circuit and see how this active circuit is able to generate a complex exponential or sinusoid in the form of Vm times e to the j omega t at the output for us. Effectively, what we are saying is the circuit at the output generates with amplitude Vm cosine omega t plus j sine omega t, in which we are using Euler formula in terms of e to the j omega equal to cosine omega plus j sine omega. The j or i is uh, the symbol for square root of negative 1. Basically, we are dealing with complex numbers here. OK, so let's uh, focus on the output of the circuit. At the output, there are, of course, two rails or two outputs. One is this rail that generates sinusoid for us. And the other one is this rail that is supposed to generate cosine for us. Since a complex number has two portion, real portion, in this case, Vm cosine omega t is the real part of this complex exponential or sinusoid, and Vm sine omega t is the imaginary part of this complex exponential at the output. OK, so let's focus on how the circuit is working. Imagine that we refer to this node as V cosine, uh, V sine, because it is the sinusoid part. And imagine that let's refer to this as V cosine. We're going to prove these are cosine and sine. All right, so let's uh, see how the op amps are connected. Op amp 1 and op amp 2, let's assume that as it is shown, they are properly biased with the proper supply voltages, say, plus minus 5 volt for both of them. I haven't shown it for op amp 2, but it is there. Uh, with that in mind, uh, since uh, we are also making the assumption that, as you can see, since uh, outputs of op amp or feedback in the process, like from outputs via this resistor back to the input is connected to negative terminal or inverting terminal at the input of op amp and the same thing here from output you can see via cap we get back to the input inverting terminal of op amp so the feedbacks in these there are multiple feedbacks in this uh, circuit but these feedbacks are negative feedbacks so that's good news uh, with that in mind of course we need to be careful in terms of uh, to have a stable circuit we have to make sure that uh, the pr components are properly selected and uh, uh, as a result as long as the circuit is properly designed we can make the assumption that virtual short is valid for both op amps which means both op amps are in linear region of operation and the voltage at the input positive or non-inverting terminal is equal to the voltage at input n inverting or negative terminal and since you can see that the positive terminal is grounded here and also, uh, at least for op amp 1, we can say um, for op amp 1, negative 1 is also at 0 volt, which we refer to as virtual ground, because it is not effectively connected to ground, but it is, it is not connected to ground, but it is effectively at 0 volt, since the positive is also at 0 volt. OK, so what's happening is now that this node is Vs, so I'm going to write it here. Now that this node is Vs, we can uh, write a current that goes this way through the resistor R let's refer to it as current I1 gets to this node that is at virtual ground or 0 so this node is at 0 volt and then the current cannot go th this way because no current can go or come out of the input terminal of ideal op amps because it has practical infinite impedance that current I1 should f continue flowing through the cap so it goes to the cap and uh, at the output of at the on the on the right side of the cap so left side of the cap is connected to zero volt obviously right side is connected to say this node is just let's refer to it as v1 representing the output of op amp one okay so at on the right side of cap we have v1 on the left side of cap we have zero volt so we can write a simple kcl at this node or kirchhoff current law or the law of preservation of current, which says uh, whatever current going in should be the same as the ca total current coming out. In this case, we would say uh, the current of resistor R, this resistor, is equal to the current of the cap, in this case. So uh, now we're going to substitute. For the current of uh, resistor, obviously we can write Vs divide by 
So it's going to be Vs minus 0, because this side is 0, divide by R. And on the other side, we can write for cap, uh, given that we are doing for now Laplace, uh, let's say, S domain circuit analysis using Laplace transform of this impedance. So it's just Vc, 0 minus Vc, 0 minus Vc minus V1. So Vc is effectively 0 minus V1 the voltage across cap with this polarity given the way current is flowing so divide by 1 over Cs the impedance of cap so summarizing what I got um, is of course Vs equal to minus RCS V1 one thing we need to notice is at the output of op amp 1 V1 is effectively connected via this wire to the VC or what is supposed to be a cosine voltage so let's just say for the sake of simplifying the, uh, the analysis that this is just VC so I'm gonna write here as VC or V cosine and V cosine alright so uh, the conclusion is an interesting outcome I'm, I'm gonna also write the uh, equivalent in terms of time domain version of this one which S domain is like this the time domain obviously uh, becomes Vs in time is equal to this is uh, taking a derivative in time so it's going to be minus RC uh, the derivative with respect to time of the voltage of capacitor as a function of time so first derivative of voltage of cap as a sorry voltage of uh, voltage at the uh, let's say cosine voltage which is effectively voltage of cap with a negative sign okay this is as expected I mean this is um, something that we should get if it is supposed to be cosine and sine because <laughs> while we need to prove it, it it is observable that if this is supposed to be Vm cosine just as a side note then the derivative of that with respect to time obviously becomes Vm and uh, we know that the derivative of cosine give us minus sine and then there is an omega here as a constant so it become negative omega Vm and then sine omega t so that sine omega t is appearing at the output as, 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 the, on the, as a result on the, on the let's say left side but the interesting thing is uh, we are not yet violating anything here so let's continue I'm gonna delete this so next step is now now that we are done with this uh, with this inverting integrator that is shown here effectively for the next stage here which is the second op amp in the circuit we have a non-inverting integrator so let's see how it is working so from input VC we are going to the output Vs. Uh, one step, one easiest step is since there is no current that is going or coming out of the input terminal of ideal op amp because as I said it has a practically infinite impedance therefore from Vc to V positive voltage wise there is just a voltage divider between resistor and cap that is grounded so I need to just write a voltage division to get to V positive so let's refer to this node as uh, V positive for op amp 2 so I'm gonna write it here uh, effectively using a KVL if you wish but uh, a voltage divider I can say let's say a voltage division voltage division between R and C I'm gonna get V positive for op amp 2 or voltage at the positive input terminal of op amp 2 is equal to uh, again S domain circuit analysis so impedance of cap 1 over Cs and then series of series of resistor and cap so it's, it will be R plus 1 over Cs and then input voltage which is VC okay so as a result what I'm gonna get is just 1 over 1 plus RCs times VC is equal to V positive now as a result of virtual short because op amp 2 is assumed to be in linear region of operation and with dominant negative feedback therefore 
a virtual short is valid so if whatever I am seeing on positive input terminal for op amp 2 should appear at the negative input terminal so here we should also see the positive 2 basically this voltage appears at negative terminal of op amp 2 as well I'm gonna write it here so this is equal to this is equal to V negative terminal of op amp 2 because of virtual short all right so what is the next move well at the same time we know that from Vs given that no current can flow in or out of the input terminal of let's say negative or inverting input terminal of ideal op amp from Vs looks like there is a series of C and R to ground so therefore from perspective of Vs there is just the impedance division or voltage division between C and R uh, in order to get to let's say the V uh, the voltage at negative terminal so I'm gonna just write write it this way so alternatively let me put it here so alternatively for up amp 2 we can write V negative terminal of op amp 2 is the result of div dividing Vs across R and C and uh, it would be R over R plus the impedance of the cap which is 1 over Cs times Vs so times Vs this is effectively RCs divide by 1 plus RCs times Vs alright that's the voltage at negative terminal and we know that because of virtual short voltage at negative should be equal to at voltage at positive so therefore uh, this value that I'm showing with a star should be equal to this value that I'm showing with a star so I'm gonna set them equal to each other so as a result what I'm gonna get is um, V positive op amp 2 equal to V negative op amp 2 so that's virtual short for op amp 2 therefore 1 over 1 plus RCS so 1 over 1 plus RCS VC this guy for instead of substituting for V plus should be equal to now RCS divide by 1 plus RCS times the V sinusoid this guy substituting for V minus so as a result uh, what I get denominator denominator cancel out effectively and as a result what I get is uh, VC equal to RCS times VS that's the second equation I get so remember the first equation we got was this one now I got this equation so I am going to combine them so from 1 and 2 combined together basically substituting for Vs from equation 1 that says Vs is equal to this guy I'm gonna write Vc equal to RCS times negative RCS Vc so as a result in summary what I finally get is or I can just write it here so it's negative R squared C squared S squared Vc equal to Vc so how's this possible I mean we got back to the output and the only way that we can uh, get to the same thing is setting uh, so so we got to effectively uh, VC equal to negative R uh, squared C squared S squared VC basically we looped back through the circuit we want to uh, loop back gain to be equal to 1 so if we want the circuit to work the outcome the, to, the equality should hold and therefore in order for the equality to hold uh, setting s equal to j omega then we get negative r square c square s square and then j omega square should be equal to 1 which means of course j squared is i squared or just one, negative 1 which cancel out with this negative so we get r squared sorry this s squared was the one that I substituted so um, there you go so negative r squared negative r squared c squared 
j omega is squared should be equal to 1 and as a result r squared c is squared omega is squared should be equal to 1 as I said j is squared will become negative 1 and then will cancel out with this negative sign here okay so with that in mind uh, therefore the omega is square for the frequency of oscillation is 1 over r is square c is square which we are effectively saying frequency of oscillation or 2 pi f is equal to 1 over rc so omega is radian frequency in radian per second and uh, free f is the frequency in hertz if you if you want to write it that way so f is frequency in hertz um, and uh, i'm gonna write it here this way so okay so f is frequency of oscillation or of the complex sinusoid in hertz and uh, of course omega is in uh, radian per second okay so we see that the frequency of the oscillation is actually defined by the components of the circuit 1 over RC so that's the nice thing about this circuit of course there are many practical considerations we need to uh, take into account when this is really used in practice especially when we want to have a constant uh, amplitude for the oscillation or voltage here but uh, putting that aside for a second then we see that omega of oscillation so I'm gonna write omega oscillation is equal to 1 over RC and then with proper selection of the value of R and C of course for all the three pairs of RC in this circuit we can uh, get to the frequency of interest for the resulting oscillation we need to keep both rails one rail is for generating for us VM um, sine omega T omega oscillation T let's say the same omega that we found here which effectively as I said since omega is equal to 2 pi f we can say the frequency of oscillation is uh, 1 over 2 pi rc and equivalently you can say the period of oscillation is 1 over f which is 2 pi uh, rc so let's not to forget about that that's the period of oscillation in second and that's in hertz so it's generating vm sine omega t rail for us and also vm cosine omega t rail for us as the two rails needed to realize a complex exponential or sinusoid that practically can be used for many applications including uh, in let's say wireless or wireline communication when we need uh, to have uh, let's say LO or local oscillator to uh, down convert or up convert a signal so in transmitter or receiver so there are many use cases for a quadrature oscillator like this the reason we say quadrature so sometimes this is also referred to as quad oscillator or quadrature oscillator and uh, one reason for that is the outputs uh, sine and cosine are 90 degree phase shift with respect to each other so uh, therefore quad quad in terms of 90 degree phase shift I hope this example is helpful in terms of uh, showcasing a quick analysis of a practical um, at this first step, uh, let's say, approach to a design of a quadrature complex sinusoids oscillator or signal generator. Thanks for watching.